This is a tutorial on how to update produceresults.com uh, portfolio. That is this version of producerresults.com. Uh, so I have this ongoing task where I keep notes uh, of what the, uh, the next things to update are. Um, I have some notes in here for cooking classes in Rome, Denton Holiday Lighting, two projects, uh, two web projects to update. Soon I have uh, next, next up, uh, the next web project up is Caprock. It will be launched pretty soon. Um, I have a TV spot and then full branding, website, everything uh, for a new brand. Um, typically when the first thing that I do to look to, to see if there's anything else to add is in intervals, I'll go to reports, Mr. Pie Chart. And this is just a, a quick snapshot I'll view by client. Uh, I'll usually go to previous quarter um, and then maybe update that to today. So I'll go, I'll go back a few months. All clients, billable and billable, that's fine. I'll uncheck active just in case anything's been deactivated. We'll take a look at this. It puts it in order of how much work has been spent on each client. And um, so that just gives me a quick picture of projects that we've worked on a lot lately. And from there, I just use my knowledge on the projects to, to know which ones have launched and which ones would be a good fit to add to, to the portfolio. Don't add every project. I just add the ones that I think would be attractive to prospects. So Rob Hans, that's where the Mercy uh, Pet Clinic uh, comes from. First State Bank, I know that we have a new campaign we have, we already have some of the work in there, right here on the landing page. I know that we're gonna have a TV spot that's already in the notes. Scott Brown, we already have one of those projects added. There's a couple more coming. I can add those in the notes as well. That'd be a good one to add for upcoming. And uh, let's go back to the pie chart. Um, I don't see anything else here. We'll have integrated lifestyles. I can, I'll add that into the upcoming as well on Hope Loans. Depending on how those turn out, those might be a good fit for the portfolio as well. Uh, so right now, that, that leaves us with two websites to update. And so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, so this is the current site. Go to producersresults.com slash wp-admin. That brings us here. Our credentials are in one pass. It's admin. And at the time of this recording, it's one fresh idea, lowercase, for the password. That brings us to WordPress, and we go to Portfolio. Um, these portfolio, uh, this portfolio section and this theme um, uses posts, so each portfolio piece is a separate post. Um, and in order to get it to present this way, we just put the client name as the post title. This is the post title here. So you'll see we have Creekside Pet Care, and we have Creekside Pet Care, and we have Creekside Pet Care. Now if you click into each one, You've got different details, and we have a subtitle, vet web design, vet logo design, but the but all the titles are the same, and that's the client. So the, the title is the client. So we'll add a new one. we call it Cooking Classes in Rome. Okay. The next thing to do is to check it into the categories that are appropriate for it so that it can go into the various one it can the filtering in the main portfolio we go fresh ideas slash portfolio uh, the filtering will work so online marketing is where we, we want to be we don't want to be in branding uh, social media this isn't a social media related site advertising it's mostly TV spots TV radio and, and outdoor and so forth so Online marketing. 
that's the right category. That'll also put it on the right portfolio in the online section here on the website. Check it into online marketing, web design and development. And then we can add a description, something to the tune of fully responsive custom website. We'll call it WordPress. And uh, you know, typically here I'll I'll kind of just pull a, a keyword out of thin air. I don't do any keyword research for this. I'm not expecting it to drive traffic, but I do try to just be sensible and descriptive. You know, if it's uh, if it's a church annual report, call it annual report website or church annual report website. If it's uh, a bank website. It's bank website design. Bank web design might be the right uh, term. Not going to pay a whole lot of attention to that. Not, not really going to invest a lot into the research. So we'll just call it cooking, cooking school web design. Because then we get cooking school and we get school web design. That's nice. Um, we take off the zoom icon because we don't want to zoom in on the featured image. We just want the post icon, which is this link. If we had zoom icon, it would add another one that's a magnifying glass. We just want the post icon. It's going to bring up this full size with all the details. And so here's the, here's the content of the body right here. Quick description and a link. Sometimes we'll have features in there. Let's see if we can find one of the features. There we go. There's a bulleted list with features. You know, it depends on how descriptive you want to get, how much you want to show off here. I'll capitalize I. So what I usually do here is I'll add in the link, make it look pretty. Um, and then we'll actually add the HTML link, which would be the full deal. Okay. So cooking school web design post icon. Let's go ahead and add the URL. So I already have it pulled up here in a separate tab in order to take screenshots. So I'm just going to copy and paste the link. Make sure that it opens in a new tab. I don't want to take people away from our site. I want to keep them on our site. Okay. And we're going to create graphics to put into here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a, um, in this case, it's just going to be a single image. Now, sometimes you can do an image slider. We have three options. Um, image slider, video, single image video we use for TV spots that just pulls in um, a streaming YouTube or Vimeo link. Uh, image slider would be, here's a good example. Let's see if I can find this. Here we go. Image slider. We've got three or four different shots here. For websites, we just use the one because we have a, uh, we're showing the responsive nature of the site. So we can actually kind of show three screenshots in one. You've got a couple different options. You can do all the same thing here. We've got three different slides, one, two, three, but it's all the same snapshot of the, of the same homepage. Um, here we've got homepage, homepage, and this is further down the homepage, but it's a different look. So we've got a little bit of material here to work with um, showing different sections of the site. Here's a good example. Here's a product page on the mobile, uh, categories on iPad, full desktop, with the hero. So for web, typically we'll go a single image. And then this is where you drop in that image. Uh, since we haven't produced those graphics yet, that's the next step. 
I'll just go ahead and go down here. Whatever I whatever term I copy here for the subtitle, the second title, I'll just use that for the keyword. And then for the SEO title, I'll say I'll just use the keyword for and then the client name. And then for the meta description, I'll make this lowercase. And then I'll just basically elaborate on the SEO title. Cooking school, web design for Chrome. it up a little bit so if somebody was searching this term and if we rank for the term and they they see our ranking this is what it'll look like according to SEO Yoast so there you go little little bait little click bait there okay so we have our title we have our description we have all of our Meta info, we have our categories, all of our settings are correct. Last step is to create the graphics. So we have the home page pulled up here. Let's go locate our graphic files. Um, I'll navigate to it. So I'll open up a new window. I was already there, but I'll navigate to it. We go to produce results, web. This is the 2014.com site. Go to portfolio and then webmox.psd. I'll wait to bring up a preview here. I'll just double click into it. This is where we have everything. All the, this is where we produce the graphics for the portfolio. Now what we're going to do while this is loading, I'm going to think about what screenshots I want to take for each version, desktop, tablet, mobile. I think for desktop, that, that first, the first thing you see is probably the right thing. It's the hero, logo is nice and big. As we scroll, it shrinks. So we have that. It's full screen. I like the word fresh. I like all the ingredients. It looks like it looks like a cooking class. It looks fresh. As you scroll down, maybe this is uh, the view that we show. Something down here. Maybe this is what we show for tablet. Something more like maybe more like this. this with a call to action. And for mobile, you know, maybe it's something like that. Maybe like that. We've got a landing page. It's a different graphic, so you can see that's mobile specific. You know, I don't know if we want to try a different page maybe. This might be a nice one for tablet. We have some faces, smiles, that's always nice. So we got kind of your features. So we'll try both of those. We'll, we'll try uh, home page, home page, home page. We'll try home page, sub page, home page. Let's see how that looks. So we'll go back to home. We take a screenshot and keep it on the clipboard, which is Control Command Shift Four Spacebar, and it's already started to transition to the next slide. So I'm going to refresh. Again, that's Control Command Shift Four, which gives us our crosshairs spacebar. 
gives us the full uh, the full tab or full window screenshot. I'm going to go in here and how the PSD is set up is that I'll collapse all these folders so we can see. So we have iPad and iPhone in one folder. In case you don't want to show the responsive nature of the site or it's not responsive, you just turn off this entire folder. Um, and then we have we have all of the background files here and then we have the artwork that goes on the screen. So within iPad and iPhone, you have the same thing. You have phone graphics, iPad graphics. And typically the best way to, to get to where you need to go is just to command click to select the layer. And then I just paste right on top of that and we're within this clipped window here. So if I paste, then usually brings it in a little bit big, command T allows me to transform and you just need to get it close enough to look natural. It doesn't need to be perfect. And make sure to, to crop the browser out, browser window. So before I commit to this, I can see I've got a little bit of information down here at the bottom that I don't want, which means that my browser, the aspect ratio was too wide. And so since we've got plenty of room up here, there's nothing that's going to get clipped left or right. There's plenty of room here. There's nothing that's going to get clipped left or right. I'm just going to cheat a little bit and size up. And then pump it down there. There we go. So return to commit that transform. Command 1 to view it at 100%. Here we go. That's looking, that's looking pretty good. Let me make sure it's centered. Um, if you shift click on the uh, mask, the layer mask, you know, that kind of undoes it, but we have all these other layers going on underneath it, so that doesn't really help us a whole lot. I was just checking to see if it was centered. But I think that's good enough for me. That looks nice. So now we'll get our tablet. We'll get a tablet on the home page and we'll get a tablet on the sub page. I think we'll go down here. Let's see. I'm trying to guess and and get the aspect ratio right. Usually it takes a couple tries. So maybe I'll do, do this and see. You can always do it a little bit tall and then just cut off on the bottom. So we'll do like this, see where this gets us. Again, it's Control, Command, Shift, 4. That gives us our screenshot crosshairs. Spacebar will take a screenshot of the entire tab that we're in and puts it on the clipboard rather than uh, makes a file. So we go back over here, command click to take us to the most recent artwork layer. We'll paste right on top of that, command V, and we'll resize, see if that gets us pretty close to what we want. So what I'm, what I'm looking for here is I wanna get the header, I want to get this information, I want to get these nice pretty pictures, and then this call to action. I think, first guess, I think we got it right here. So you'll notice that now we've got this, this uh, rectangular artwork. Now we need to fit it onto this, uh, um, this tablet that has perspective, and uh, now it doesn't look right. So we need to adjust the perspective in order to make it fit. Uh, the best way to do that is to go to is right click and go to distort. So we're still in transform, and these are all the varieties of transforming that you can do. And if you if you do this before you commit the transform, then you can really play around with it and get it perfect. Distort means that I can grab any one corner or any one anchor and do anything I want with it, any one at a time. That's the best way to get perspective. As you just kind of get each corner correct. You can, if you hit, if you grab a corner and you hit shift, it keeps it on, on an X or Y axis. It locks it. So it's either up or down, left or right. So I find that handy to be able to get that right. And now what I'm looking at, because I can't see any of the artwork down below here anymore, I'm just looking at this row of text. Does that look like 
that matches this line, this perspective line. It needs to go up just a little bit because it looks even, but it needs to be optically different. This side needs to be a little bit higher. This is going way back to art class. This one looks pretty good. And now we can go, before committing it, we can go right click, go back to free transform, and now we can size up and down. And look at that, it kept our perspective because we haven't committed the transform yet. What I wanna do is I wanna get that button all the way inside here and also somewhat centered on top of that button. So we may have not gotten it exactly perfect. Let's see if we can, let's see if I can cheat a little bit, grab this middle one and go up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna commit this and see how it looks. And we may need to go back and get another screen grab depending on how it plays out. Okay, so the logo, there's enough space on the logo on the top here. Button, I'm gonna look at it 100%. I don't think that's too bothersome that, that this button isn't perfectly centered over that button. I think it's okay. It looks pretty good. And again, we're gonna try a sub page as well, go to, I'll try the chef and I'll try the experience, see what those look like, compare the two. Well, let's try this one out. Take a screenshot of this one. Control, Command, Shift, Four, Space Bar. See what that looks like. So I'm just gonna run through this real quick. Since we already did it, I'm gonna Command T, free transform, right click, distort. Let's front down a little bit, try to get that top right. Shift click. This line matches pretty well along with this line. This perspective looks good. This is still a little bit high here. Lock that in. I like that. That's nice. It's a nice 50-50 grid. We need to we need to size it down a little bit. Make sure we, we fit in all this all this copy on this side. Now we have this white bar on the bottom. So I'm going to undo a couple times. We're going to redo that perspective. I didn't get it right. I want to make sure that this margin, this margin's real tight on the left side of the copy. So bear with me. Now for mobile. So I'll go back to the home page, click and drag, and that looks pretty good. And usually what I'll do for the home page is I'll, I'll just do it a little bit long just to be sure. Control Command Shift 4, space bar. Same thing. Command click. That gets us into the iPhone image folder. Latest layer. Command B, paste on top of that. Command T, transform. This one's a lot less tricky to do, get the perspective right. The iPad is the trickiest. This one you really just have to make sure your margins left and right are pretty good. Usually just do the top. You know what, usually I'm gonna undo that. 
usually what I do for iPhone is I just grab the middle, which moves the top and bottom at the same time, and that's good enough. Uh, it's almost good enough. So the top looks good, the middle, this bottom needs to be adjusted upward. There we go. Pretty tight, pretty tight. Okay, so I believe that this graphic is done. Now we're gonna make, uh, we're gonna produce two graphics to upload. We're gonna do a PNG with a transparent background. And that is going to be this preview here so that it shows this canvas through it. And then we'll do the actual big JPEG that loads in with the white background. Now you can do the PNG here, but this when it loads in the big PNG, uh, you know they can be two, three megabytes sometimes, and it's just too much, I think, for uh, for loading, especially on a phone. So try to keep the file size down. You do a, a JPEG here, and a PNG for this, and it brings in um, the smaller version of the PNG for this preview. So save for web. I don't even know where it's at here because I usually do. Control Command Shift S. Is that right? My fingers do all the work. I don't think about it. Option Command Shift S. There we go. And my mouse died. There we go. So here's the PNG. You can see two megabytes. That's fine. Save it. The folder that we save it in is in that same folder under uploads, produce results, web 2014, portfolio underscore upload. I'll make a new folder for this month. Actually, I already have one for this month. And we'll call it whatever our keyword was, uh, cooking school design.png. I'm just going to copy paste that for the JPEG. My mouse died, so Grab a wired mouse here and back in business. Okay, now for the JPEG, Command Option Shift S, save for web. At, under preset, select JPEG high. Quality 60, which is correct. You can see we saved a lot of file space there, 320K versus 2 megs. Save, Command V to get the same name. I didn't save it, so I'm just going to select that one. Make sure it's done. JPEG. We're in the right folder. Most recent upload, our 2014 portfolio upload, this month's folder. Save. I'll save this PSD file when I'm done. So we'll go back to our uploads here. There we go. So we have our transparent PNG. We have our white background JPEG. Um, and what I've gotten in the habit of doing is opening Image Optim, which is a free image compressing piece of software, desktop software. And it saves a little bit on JPEGs. It's probably not worth the effort for JPEGs, but it saves a lot on PNGs, uh, somewhere, sometimes upwards of 50% in file size. Uh, this one's so big, there's so much detail. Um, it won't save 50%. I'd be surprised if it did, um, but we're still, you know, you're still going to save several hundred um, kilobytes. Uh, it does take a little while. So if you're doing a whole bunch, you know, if you're doing this size, if you're, if you're updating 10 or 12 pieces and you throw all the PNGs into this and let it process, go get a cup of coffee and come back because it'll be a while. 
So it saved 12% on our JPEG, which is actually really high. Usually it saves more to the tune of 4 to 5%, uh, but it's image optim software. And as soon as um, this PNG is done processing, you'll get the green check mark, and then we can drag it into our media library. So while that's processing, I'm going to go back to our to WordPress here. Um, since our JPEG is done processing with the green check, I'm going to go ahead and add it. So that this is where you add the JPEG. This is our big image here, our big hero image. The featured image is where the PNG is going to go. The JPEG goes into the single image. We have single image. Um, choose file, upload, and you can just drag and drop from that folder. So our JPEG. So that screen turns blue and knows it's ready to drop it in, insert into post. That one's ready to go. Same thing with featured image. Set featured image, upload files, and we'll drag and drop it when it's ready. And we're ready. So this is really surprising. It only saved 8%. Sometimes it's a lot more than that. Usually it's a lot more than that. Uh, but we'll take it. That's fine. Um, it's gonna, we're going to use the, the small version that WordPress creates anyway for or the, the theme actually automatically brings in the small version. So we need to go back to Finder, get our PNG, drag and drop, screen turns blue. Once that's done loading, this button becomes clickable, set featured image, and we are ready to roll. That's it. Quick check says we have our title, we have our body copy, we have our subtitle, we've unchecked the zoom icon, we selected single image, we put our JPEG here, we have our SEO title, which is the same as the subtitle, or our keyword rather, our SEO title, which includes the keyword, meta description, which includes the keyword, and we've checked it into our online marketing, our web design development categories, added the PNG, now we publish. We'll go to the portfolio page, refresh, there we go. Test everything, always test. Make sure that the PNG looks okay. Click the link, make sure it pulls up okay, looks good. Make sure, you know, obviously we should have checked for typos earlier. I didn't see any, I don't see any now. We're gonna click the link, make sure it goes through. Make sure their site loads. And that's it, we post it to the portfolio. Uh, now sometimes, um, you know, just by the nature of, of the work that we've been doing lately, sometimes you get four or five websites in a row and it might be nice to break it up. Sometimes you get two or three logos in a row and it might be nice to break them up in the portfolio. Uh, you know, when you get two things stacking on top like this, it's not too bad. If you had three of them stacking in a row, it starts to look kind of weird. Uh, so the last thing I do is take a look at what is around it. So we have a nice bright colors, bright colors, muted colors, and then we've got some muted colors here. So we have this nice balance. I'm not going to move it around um, because we have such a nice balance of bright, muted, and, and variety. We have lots of variety here, which is nice. That's what I usually go for. Here's a can, here's a logo, here's a uh, video, here's a logo, here's a website, here's a social campaign. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, if I were to move it around, the best way to do that is to do it with the post date. Uh, so that was published right now. If I wanted to move it around, it goes most recent first, and then so it goes newest to oldest. So let's say I wanted to put it in between this website and this annual report. So I'd look at this and quick edit. So we have our published dates, and then if you hit quick edit, it'll tell you your published time. So 8.31 and 11.02, let's say, hey, I really need to put this in between those, which I could buy that. You got muted colors, bright, bright. So let's put, let's make it bright, muted, bright. Now that'll put it on top of this as well. Uh, so it'll be kind of muted colors next to each other, which may look weird, but let's take a look. 
So the best way to do that is to say pick a pick a date in September or October since we have August and November. So all I'm going to do is change the month to September, September 15th. Update. Go back, refresh. Looks nice. Doesn't look as weird as I thought being on top of this with muted colors. It's different enough. Looks good. That is how you post portfolio. Um, I'm going to take a quick look at a logo and then I'll take a quick look at a video so you can see how they're different. Um, actually, we'll do the slideshow. We'll do a slideshow and then video because the logo is very similar to web. Uh, so let's look at uh, the first cross timbers and then the second Creekside Pet Care here. We'll go to cross timbers and then the second Creekside Pet Care, which would be the commercial. Uh, what's also nice about updating the SEO title is that you can see in the portfolio view exactly what it what it is that we're looking at here. So we selected instead of uh, single image, we selected image slider. Now in order to add the image slides in, you have to select the show the slides image slider option. And then you can start adding slides with this button, add more image slider slides. Um, so that you just you just add one at a time. And the newest ones on top, I believe you can grab, you can drag and drop, maybe not. I guess not. And you can you can add a, a slide name to each one actually. There you go, there's our three slides. For video, we'll go to our Creekside Pet Care video. Um, you can see this was produced from a different uh, a different uh, PSD file. There's a different PSD for TV. A different one for branding, billboard, advertising, so on and so forth. But TV has this play button built in so that it's intuitive that you need to hover over it to watch and that, that there is something to watch. So let's pull this one up. There you go, we're pulling up, pulling in this YouTube video. We have a little description. And so all you have is the graphic, which are really quick and easy to make. You take a nice screenshot, whatever the happiest screenshot is of the video. Uh, drop that in for the featured image. The video URL code, there's a, there's a instructions here on, on what that is, but this is basically if you open up the video in, on youtube.com, it gives it a code at the end and the URL. It starts with RYU. So you can see that's all you need. You don't need the you don't need the entire address. All you need is this last code. That's the video's ID. And you select YouTube, put that in. Of course, show video settings, same thing as the image slider. And that's it. There's your video posts, your image slider posts, and your single image post. And that's how you post to our portfolio.